Who's ready to get spooky? Because today we're talking Canada, the very same country that has given us such great animated classics like Chop Socky Chooks, Brace Face, Almost Naked Animals, Johnny Test, Super Noobs, and oh god. I am never going to live this down on account of nobody ever forgets, ever forgets, ever forgets. Ever forgets. <laughs> All joking aside, Canada has given us some great cartoons, most of which were big parts of my childhood. And the one we'll be covering today is 16. In the mid to late 2000s, Canada made several attempts to reach out to the teen demographic with shows like Braceface, Totally Spies, Total Drama Island, and of course, 16. While these shows were okay for kids, they did get away with a lot more than they should have. I mean, how many kids shows today openly show characters drinking alcohol or outright saying the G word. It's okay, we're gay. While I still like 16, the episodes we're looking at today isn't a good one. 16, Dude of the Living Dead was the first episode of 16 that I saw, and as a kid, I thought it was all right. It introduced me to an overall great series, though many 16 fans say this is by far the worst episode of the series. So if you've come here to see if 16 is worth checking out, then don't take this episode as being on par with the quality of the rest of the series. With that out of the way, let's get started. Before we get into the episode, actually, I have to talk about the show's theme song. It's by far one of my favorite themes from any cartoon. Due to YouTube's copyright system, I won't be able to show you much of the theme song, but I'll show you as much as YouTube will generously allow. Huh. The episode begins as we're greeted with this lovely visual. Cool. Uh, the first thing that may catch your attention is the show's animation. It's got the stiff movements you could expect from early Flash made cartoons. When you compare the show to Total Drama Island, you can see how the animators have improved over time. But if you don't like the style of Total Drama, then you're not really going to like the style of this show. That being said, I feel like this episode, in particular, might have some of the worst animation in the show. So, already this episode is off to a bad start. We cut to our main character for this episode, Jude, talking with his friends about how much he wants to sleep. And you know most specials like this that have a plot twist usually make it surprising and unexpected. But I just wanted to show you a few quick clips to see if you could guess what the plot twist of this episode is. Well, look who woke up. Didn't I see you napping on the job back there? I think you need to get some more sleep, Jude. But then I'd miss all those wicked B-movies. So well hidden, I know. We then get a glimpse at one of the zombies in the special. And I don't know if this was intentional or by accident, but the special does an interesting take on the zombification process. Besides just turning pale after being bitten, the person loses their sense of communication but not their way of life. While the victim loses their personality, they will still mindlessly go about their daily lives as if that's their only purpose. Then they start to get sick and their brains will shut down. Then they rise again with no personality or sense of purpose. They just wander aimlessly. And then finally, they start to hunger for flesh. It's an interesting take on the zombification process and the slow deterioration of the human brain. But again, this may not have been intentional, and the zombies are only doing day-to-day -day stuff for comedic purposes. But I'll give them a pass for it, since the special doesn't really have much else going for it. And if you're wondering why I'm more focused on such a minor detail of the overall episode rather than the plot, it's because the plot of this episode isn't that robust. One of the biggest problems with this episode is that it's mostly filler. There are several scenes with the characters just standing or sitting around and talking about the situation rather than doing stuff. Having these characters sit around and talk works well in normal episodes of the show due to their chemistry together, as well as the overall slice of life nature of the show. But when you put these characters in a zombie infested mall, that slice of life nature is just out the window. It also doesn't help that the characters' chemistry in this episode is also far more lacking than in normal episodes. They don't work off each other's personality. They just talk about the situation and have reactions to said situation. Heck, even their personalities are watered down in this episode. They just all feel like cutouts of their worst character traits. Jin's narcissism. 
Jonesy's perviness and Caitlin's obliviousness. Rather than being small pieces of an overall character, they become the defining personalities for this episode. So when you ruin the chemistry, water down the characters, and yet still try to capture the slice of life tone from the normal show, that makes a recipe for a terrible time. But I digress. Let's check back in with the plot. And she's taking off her coat? Now her sweater? Want me to keep going? Canada. Screw censorship. <laughs> remember that this cartoon aired in America, and I remember this part being left back in when I watched it as a kid. And what's worse is that they stay on the scene for a full minute, and they actually have the characters sit there and describe everything the girl's taking off in slow detail. Not to mention, this isn't the only peeking scene we get in this episode, but I'll get to that in a bit. But first, this scene. How'd you get the job then? I told them I was gay. Smart. Just let that sink in. We spend a while focusing on all of the main characters going through their normal day-to-day -day stuff with people slowly becoming more and more zombified in the background. Nothing of substance happens until we get to the second changing scene in this episode. But first, a word from our sponsor. Wait, you can't go in there. It's okay, we're gay. All of the main characters finally realize that there is a zombie outbreak going on and this seemed far more boring and uneventful than it has any right to be. The characters start getting together and plan to escape the mall, only to then take back the idea and decide to hide out in one of the stores for no real reason. They don't even explain why they won't leave now. They even say that all of the zombies went to one side of the mall, meaning that they could easily escape from the other side. They do end up giving us a reason why the characters can't leave the mall later on in the special, but this change makes no sense given the current situation. Though, this does lead us to meeting who is by far the best character in the special. Don't play games with me, maggot. All of the characters bore themselves into an electronic store to watch the news when they discover that one of their friends has been bitten. And when things couldn't get any worse, the power in the mall goes out, leaving them in the dark. So much has happened in this one scene. So how do the characters react to all of this? If you guests sit around and talk, then you are right. They don't even care that one of their friends is bitten, even when that friend starts to bite everyone else. Unbelievable. <laughs> they continue to sit around and do nothing until they realize the zombies broke in and stole all of their food rations. That was some serious suicide sauce. Well, looks like my fan theory about him being a teenage Logan Paul is looking truer. Finally, the characters decide to do something of substance, and not 30 minutes too soon. Half of the characters decide to venture out to the other side of the mall to get the power turned back on. And sadly, this causes the best character in the special to bite the dust. Come on, you undead animals! I'm waiting! They get the lights in the mall turned back on and discover that there are far more zombies than there was before. When they see the news, it turns out that the city had quarantined all of the zombies into the mall, which explains why they couldn't leave. But since we just found that out now, their decision to give up escaping the mall early makes no sense at all. Just when all hope seemed lost, they discover that the zombies have one secret weakness. Lightsabers! <laughs> but seriously, this character dying is by far the most absurd thing in this episode. <laughs> but no, the real secret weakness is the hot sauce we saw at the very beginning of the special. So we have a montage of the characters gathering ingredients for the hot sauce weapons, and after a really short battle, it would seem like they won until they run out of the sauce and get eaten alive. And the zombified girl with the pimple finally decides to pop it, but it's done so slow and gross that I won't subject my viewers to seeing it. Instead, here's a visual aid. Today we're looking at what a water balloon looks like when you pop it. Trigger. But we then learn of a massive plot twist in this episode, and it was all a dream. Oh, holy crap. A plot twist so amazing that they had to spend five minutes at the beginning of the episode hitting us over the head with it. And that was 16 Dude of the Living Dead. And yeah, this episode is terrible. 
I just skimmed over the story, but trust me when I say there's a good 30 minutes of pointless filler in this 40 minute special. But as I said before, don't take the special as a representation of the overall quality of the show. Many things from the animation to the characters have been downgraded from the normal episodes. When I saw this episode back in 2007, I thought it was pretty fun, mostly because I was a dumb kid who thought Fanboy and Chum Chum was a great show. But I also just loved the zombie concept, and the zombie genre wasn't overly saturated in the mainstream at that time like it is today, so I felt like this was a fun event, and not to mention that it introduced me to a show that I still really enjoy today. Well, I would recommend the show itself. I don't think I could recommend this special at all, and that means a lot considering I love recommending Canadian shows that give censorship the middle finger. But sadly, even those moments couldn't save this episode. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to help support future reviews on this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.